So we've installed the tools necessary to build Android. Now we need to get Android open source code itself from the Android open source project. So we have several ways to do that, but I'm gonna look at the typical and best way to do it. So we're gonna make a directory, make dir, uh, that's the tilde forward slash bin. We're making a directory called bin in our home directory. And we're gonna add that to our path by doing this forward slash bin colon dollar path. Cause we, and we want to be able to use this repo tool that we uh, that we're about to install. And of course, all of these instructions you can find here on uh, the Android Open Source Project website. So we're going to uh, copy and paste this curl to download the repo tool. And then we're going to chmod a plus x, which just means we're going to make it executable. So it's now a program that we can execute to do what we want to do. So we're going to make a new directory, make dir, and we'll we'll just call this uh, Android um, Lollipop. Seems fitting since that's what we're building. Uh, a mental note is if you're uh, building lots of different ROMs and things, it makes sense to name things in a way that you can easily and quickly look at and understand. So to use the uh, these kind of tools, we're going to need to configure Git. And so you can just copy and paste these lines here. Um, essentially, we're just saying that our name is your name. You could put in your own name if you'd like and your own email address if you'd like, or you can just use these example ones that are here. You just have to have something filled in so that it knows who you are. So now if we run repo in it right now, we're going to bring down the latest version of Android, but we don't want the latest version of Android because they're already working on uh, Android P and we are still building for Android Lollipop. So let's take a look here. If we look at our requirements, um, let's see. Um, that's not what we're looking for. Oh, code names, tags, and build numbers. Here's, here's what I'm looking for. So if we want to build Lollipop, we're looking at uh, either version 5.0 or 5.1. And so we need those branches and tags to use when we're downloading the source code. So let's scroll down until we find the latest Lollipop version. And here we go. So while this might not make a whole lot of sense yet, each, each version of Lollipop has its own tag, its own special name that allows you to uh, download it. So now if we just type that repo in it that I have highlighted here, that's gonna do the latest, but let's grab this with this dash B and this dash B is how we say branch. I want a branch. Now, hopefully you've looked at our GitHub and uh, Git videos. So you understand what a branch is, but we want the branch that's for um, Lollipop. Now here they have uh, ice cream sandwich as the, as the branch with 4.0. But let's go ahead and grab the code name or tag for Lollipop. So of course it's 5.1. Did I put my tag number? Oh, source code and tag, you can just click on it right there. Above where we had highlighted, so let's scroll down until we find, uh, here we go, Android uh, 5.1.1 underscore R38. So this is going to be the latest and greatest version of Android Lollipop that was available. So again, we highlight, we middle click, and we can insert that 
right into there. So we're using this, this code to say we want to initialize a repository and we want to add this, um, this remote destination of this Android Google source platform, but the branch specifically of Android-5.1.1 underscore R38. And that's the branch that we want to check out. We want that to be the code that's available. So here you'll see it's going to ask us a few questions. Um, yep. And do we want color in the repo status? We say yes. And so now if we look, we push ls to list the files that are here. We see we have absolutely nothing. But if we say dash lah, we're going to see list all the hidden files too. And we see we have this dot repo file. Remember how when we worked with Git and GitHub, we had the dot git file that or folder, excuse me, that had files in it that managed the the repository. Well, this works the same way, just but with repo, uh, another Git-like tool. So here we have the next command that we're going to run, which is going to take a long, long time, depending on your internet speed, and that's repo sync. And this is where you can choose how many threads you want. Now I have slow internet, so I'm going to repo sync dash J2. And I want dash J means how many threads you want. And I say, I only want two. But you can do as many as you want. You can just leave it blank and say repo sync and it's just going to go as fast. Uh, I, well, I'm not sure if it goes as fast as it can or if it does the default, which I think might be four threads. I'm not, I'm not quite sure on that one. You'd have to check on that. But essentially now it's going out just like when we were working with Git in GitHub, where it went out and got the stuff from the repository and downloaded it to your computer. That's happening right now where it is going out, repo is going out and using tools like Git and getting the, the source code and downloading that to your computer. So once again, this process is going to take a very long time, depending on your internet speed. Um, with my internet speed and using a, a dash J2, this process is going to take a, a several hours. Um, hopefully for you, you have faster internet than I do here in Alaska, and you can actually just download this in an hour or so. So grab some coffee, sit back, and uh, we'll see this project when it's done.